Hey everyone, it's Boogeyman Ben. Hope everyone's doing well and everyone had a nice day. Um, today's video is a little movie review um, of a film that uh, I've always wanted to talk about and do a video review on. Um, it was a film that I watched uh, when I was uh, pretty young. I think I was about 16 the first time I saw it. And uh, it was kind of a fluke that I saw it, but it was a movie that for some reason always stayed with me. Um, it was just one that I thought was uh, interesting and creepy and... Uh, it featured a pretty well-known B-movie actress, and um, just wanted to talk about it today. I just started thinking about some, some movies that I haven't really talked about in my videos before. Um, the movie I'm referring to is uh, Grandmother's House, and uh, this is a movie that stars Brink Stevens, who was a pretty well-known B-actress, B-movie actress from the 80s and early 90s, and uh, just going to give my thoughts about the film. It's a film that I haven't heard many people talk about, but it's, like I said, it's always one that I really kind of... Uh, enjoyed as a kid and uh, I actually found it and uh, used a DVD um, Blu-ray uh, uh, store uh, that I frequent uh, just looking for kind of uh, some of those uh, DVDs and Blu-rays that are kind of hard to find so um, just gonna talk about this film and I hope everybody enjoys this uh, review stay tuned So Grandmother's House was released in 1989. It was directed by Peter Rader. Um, the writers on the film were Peter Jensen, Gail Jensen, and the screenplay was done by Peter Jensen. The film stars Eric Foster as David, uh, Kim Valentine as Lynn, Len Lesser as the grandfather, Ida Lee as the grandmother, and Brink Stevens, who is just known as the woman. The pr film was produced by Nico Mastorakis, and the original music was done by Nigel Holton and Clive Wright. Without giving too much away, the plot of Grandmother's House revolves around the characters of David and Lynn who play brother and sister. At the beginning of the film, uh, they both have lost their father and they're attending his funeral. What you also come to find out is that their mother has passed away some years earlier. Because of this, the two are shipped off to live with their grandparents. Um, but upon arriving at the home, David begins to have um, very intense, strange dreams about the about his grandparents uh, committing murder and uh, hiding bodies in their basement. The other plot point of the film is also... Um, that there's this mysterious woman that begins stalking the children and lurking around uh, the orchard where the grandparents' home is located. Now, I remember the first time I saw Grandmother's House. I was 16. It was on HBO, summer of 1990. Um, and... It was a very strange film to me. It almost has a dreamlike quality to it because of the way it's shot. I actually think it's a very interestingly shot film, and I haven't seen anything else done by Peter Rader, but um, I really like the way the film looks. Um, I didn't know much about Brink Stevens at the time, and I also didn't know much about Len Lesser. I believe Seinfeld had already started, and I know he was on Seinfeld, but uh, didn't know much about these actors at all. I just thought it was a creepy-looking movie. Um, and the locale of where it was shot, I believe it was shot in the San Fernando Valley, so there's lots of orchards around. Um, I like the look of the film. I do think the there's some good acting in the film, particularly by Len Lesser, who plays the grandfather, and he has like this weird kind of... There's times where he seems like a very nice man, especially when the kids first arrive at the home. But then the more you get to know him, the creepier he gets. Um, I also thought Eric Foster as David was very good. Um, he really had this kind of... There was just something... I mean, you can tell that right from the get-go, he just suspects that these people are weird. His grandparents are very strange. Um, Kim Valentine is Lynn. She's good in the film. I, I didn't think she was that great. I mean, she's, she's, uh, she does a good job in the film, but, uh, you know, like I said, you know, I don't think she was as interesting as, um, Eric Foster's portrayal of David was. Um, I did think that Brink Stevens really kind of, um, took center stage whenever she was on screen very creepy she doesn't have a lot of dialogue in the film but she's this very creepy woman and you don't understand really where she came from or who she is but there's just something about her that just really freaked me out the first time i saw it and i just think her performance really is the the most captivating of all
So yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed this film. I enjoyed it the first time I saw it. I remember, you know, I saw it in the summer of 1990. And I remember taping it off HBO, and I watched it many more times. And uh, it wasn't until, like, about a year ago that I found this at um, a used DVD store, and I was actually very happy to get it um, because I didn't even know it was released on DVD. So yeah, if you get a chance to check this movie out, I completely recommend it. I mean, I'd give it about, I'd give it an 8.5 out of 10. I, it's not like, you know, I, I mean, I, I really enjoyed the film. Um, it's not like the greatest horror film ever made, but I really enjoyed it and I had fun watching it. It's not going to be a movie for everybody because, uh, you know, I enjoyed it, but, you know, some other people might not. But I just think it, it had a really creepy atmosphere. I really liked the performances. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a fun little horror film and uh, not a lot of gore in it, but it has that tension, that atmosphere, and I like that about it. And uh, back in the 90s, there wasn't, or in the early 90s, I was used to Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Halloween, and those kind of things. There wasn't a lot of independent horror films that um, I had seen. So I consider this kind of, I mean, you know, that wasn't mainstream at the point that I saw them. So this was kind of one that just kind of, uh, I caught on a whim and just really enjoyed it. So that is my review of Grandmother's House. Um, if anybody else has seen it, uh, tell me what your thoughts on the movie were. And uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Hope everyone has a nice evening. Later.